from sweet to elite, your NC State Wolfpack. Stay dancing. You are Locked On Wolfpack, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Wolfpack Nation? It's time to get locked in with Locked On. Thanks for making Locked On Wolfpack your, I guess, second listen now of Friday. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Grayson Boone, as always, joined by former Wolfpack defensive tackle Kenton Gibbs. Your NC State Wolfpack are going to the sweet, or excuse me, going to the Elite Eight. For the first time since yes, 1986, the magical run continues. Kenton Gibbs, can you believe it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I can believe it. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, the standard is the standard, ladies and gentlemen. No more NC State stuff. No more waiting for the other shoe to drop. No more. This is our standard. Championships is our standard. I don't care about what happened 25 years ago. I don't care what happened 15 years ago. This, this is our standard. This is where we need to be every year. This is where we should come here with expectancy in terms of, of this being who we are. This is this is a great time, man. This is a great time. And, and I'll tell you what, doesn't winning feel good? Doesn't it? Doesn't winning just feel so amazing. You know, th this team, they're playing together. They're playing connected. They're doing all the things that they would need to. And, and I'm going to say this for the folks saying, well, you know, Marquette just shot their worst three-point shooting night of the season. And by quality of shot, that was a 14-point win. Is the quality of shot in the room with us now? Are they advanced? No. Much respect to the Eagles. They hey, they had a great season. You know, Kolick showed why he's an All-American and all that. It did some good things. But tonight, it's all about the wolf, baby. It's all about the wolf. I got to be honest. It is difficult for me to come up with words to describe what I just witnessed tonight. And it's it's so difficult to even think about that, considering we've already went through seven other of these things to even get to this one. And, you know, we talked about Marquette coming into this game, the talent they possess, the challenge that we be that would be presented alongside with that. NC State looked comfortable. They looked comfortable for much of this game. And that is beyond impressive. That is beyond impressive. We told you what Tyler Kolick can do. I think he proved a lot of that tonight. He's one of the best point guards in the country. And outside of him, NC State did a phenomenal job limiting everything else. Cam Jones got his to a certain extent, but Kenton, you talked about the poor three-point shooting from Marquette. They picked one heck of a night to be as cold as they were because, I mean, you just kept expecting them to finally catch fire, and it just never happened. Yeah. And I had talked about coming into this game that it would be imperative that NC State controls the game on the boards. Mo Diara, how silly were we to even think – that he would be hindered by no food and no water in this game. Not an issue. The man had 10 boards in the first half. Yeah. In the first half, he's putting up 10 boards. Yeah. Unstoppable yeah. force. He is playing unbelievable basketball right now. Unbelievable basketball. This was a little bit of a DJ Horn backpacking game, despite him picking up two early fouls. And in the minutes... And our, our guy Andy chimed in on this uh, on Twitter. In those minutes where DJ Horn did have those two fouls and Keats had to be very careful about how much he allowed Horn to stay in there, Casey Morsell and Jaden Taylor, monster minutes in the first half, monster shots in the first half, monster defense all night long. The amount of turnovers and deflections 
they were able to create tonight. It made the difference. I talked about this having to be a team win. It was a team win in every sense of the imagination. They got it done again. We're still dancing in this thing. You know, I talked to a, a graduate of NC State from 1975 today in Food Lion because he was rocking uh, double NC State Nailia. And I said, what year did you graduate? And, and he said, I, I was there in 1975. So I saw last time we won the big dance. And I said, is the energy kind of similar to that? And he said, no, this one feels way better. This one feels way better because nobody sees it coming. I'm just sitting there like, hmm. He's, he's right. He's right. To think that you go from the 10th seed in your conference tournament, you don't even get the day one by to win after win after win after win after win after. And you know what came after that, Grayson? Another win. Another one. This, this here, man, this is special. And I'm going to tell you this. One of the things that me and that older gentleman talked about in the start, I said, you know the craziest part about all this? DJ Horn hasn't even gotten going yet in the tournament. He's due. He's due for one. And what does he do? He shows up and shows out in this game, man. This is what more? What more could you want if you're a member of Wolfpack Nation right now? And I don't, it, it's not about anybody but us. This is our time to celebrate this thing. I don't even want to talk about no, no other schools in North Carolina. I don't even want to talk about no other schools in the nation right now. You know why? Because it's all about the Wolf Pack, baby. We got in both games. In both games. You look at these games and you say to yourself, these teams had to exercise demons that they had not just faced this year, but for both of their coaches' entire tenures. I want you to think about this. For everything that people say Coach Keats wasn't, you know one of the biggest indicators of whether or not a Coach Keats-led team will win? How they started out the gate? Yes. And you know what we saw many struggles with this year? That feeling where this team like thought that they could sleepwalk through the first half and then make something happen. And this one, from go, foot was on eagle neck. Belt yes. was to eagle behind from the tip off. The women's side of things. You know what West for, and people like to complain about with West? You know, after you have a great quarter, you just, you know, you just seemingly die down. You just seemingly take your foot off the pedal. Well, how about that second half? After that great third quarter where you flipped the lead from a 10-point deficit to a 10-point lead, you say, oh, man, hopefully West don't get conservative. And he said, forget that noise. Isaiah, go cook. Forget that noise. Zoe, go cook. And now look at us. We're still dancing, okay? I know that there's a viral TikTok saying that 15 seconds of dancing or 15,000 word essay. Well, congratulations to all of the players on the Wolfpack. There will be no essays because we're still dancing, baby. It is it is completely unfathomable what we are yeah. witnessing right now. And we, I mean, we've gotten into the potential impact of NC State being in the spotlight with the transfer portal open NIL is continuing to boom now with all of this sudden success here in the postseason. Everything feels like it's going NC State's way. And we've talked about this time and time and time again. We have waited forever for a feeling like this. Forever to have momentum like this. And it, it we honestly, like, we, we don't even know what to do with it right now we I, don't, we don't know what to do with my hands i don't know what to do with anything i don't know if, if this is real is is this a dream right now yeah, yeah. kevin keats just led the nc state wolf pack to the elite eight and on the same night Wes Moore did it with the women's team what other school is doing it like nc state right now i'll answer it for you there is no other school and and both teams were underdogs both teams. Both underdogs. And it didn't matter. We told you on Friday's episode what Kendrick Lamar has been saying on Future's new album for all your dogs getting buried. NC <laughs> State had two underdogs and they still came out on top. It doesn't yeah. matter what you throw at NC State right now. They're going to figure out how to beat you and keep it pushing. We're going to survive and then we're also going to advance. Yeah. This, what a What a time. If you think it can't get better to be an NC State fan, let a couple days go by, and then you knock off somebody else, and you're doing it all again. Hey, now. It's, it is 
I saw I saw our guy Chris in here. He set the the under over at me crying at nine minutes and forty seven seconds. We just hit ten minutes, Chris. So I, I hope you had the over, but uh, it, I'm getting I'm getting close because yeah. this this run. Oh my god, man! What what what's going on right now? What 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 is this defense we're playing? What is this rebounding effort? What are these big shots from Michael O'Connell? He only hits big shots. Yeah, yeah. What what reality are we living in right now? I, I don't know. I don't have an answer for you. I, I don't I don't have an answer for you. But we're living to tell the tale with not one team, but both teams on the same night. Elite eight in every sense of the word. You know, not one, two of them things, two teams headed to the elite eight. And, you know, everybody said, well, well, how how can these two teams, especially the men, sustain with all that they've been through and all the close games and all the this and the that? Let me ask you something, Grace. Did that team look tired to you? No. Did that team look exhausted to you? Did that team look wild to you? They showed signs of it. And then every time they did, a big play, a big board from ODR, a big shot from Casey Morsell, a big assist from DJ Burns. Every time you thought that they might break, they just bent and they kept it moving. Let me tell you something. I don't think there's a single team in this tournament that believes in each other the way that the Wolfpack do right now. No, not even. I'm not. I'm not going to say any teams' names as to not end up on on the old takes exposed. But I saw one of the higher seeded teams in this tournament when things got tight in one of their recent games. You could tell they did not trust the guy that was at the free throw line. I you could you tell. Saw. You could see it. You could feel it. I have not felt any disbelief from any of these players at any moment. And I. This is what I say all the time. And and trust me. We're about to pay some bills because that's what Grayson does best. And, and, and we're going we gonna to rock out after this one. But I, I want to let y'all know something right now. The difference between where NC State is right now and where we've been for the last 20, 30 years or whatever the case may be, how many times did you find yourself waiting for something bad to happen? Yeah. How many times did you find yourself saying, oh, here it comes. I haven't seen that look on this team's face once. When Modiara goes out of the game because he's tired of crapping up, oh, Ben Middlebrook comes in with big energy, as I like to say. <laughs> hey, that's what he's going to come in with. When you see DJ Horn struggling, MOC is right there to pick him up. When you see MOC is struggling, Jaden Taylor and Casey Morsell are going to be right there to pick him up. And I'll tell you this, Casey Morsell and his defense in both tournaments. Spectacular. He is taking on the assignment of saying, oh, that's your best hitter? That's your best hitter. Send, send him my way. Send, let's see how he fares. Let's see. Let's see. He's taking on all Americans in uh, Koki tonight. He's taking on player of the year consideration guys in R.J. Davis in the ACC championship. He's taking on everybody in between, foul merchants like uh, Judah Mintz. He's taking on... Guys who just, you know, they get hot as fist grease and for whatever reason when they play him in Sky from Louisville, who for whatever reason, all season he wasn't a magnificent three-point shooter, but every time Louisville played State, Sky could not miss. And Casey Marcel kept coming. Kept coming every single time. He, you drop a bucket on him, it's all right. He's going to show you you got to do it again. I'm telling you right now, I have never, and I am not, I've looked around, all of us are watching all these games during March Madness. I haven't seen a single team as connected as we are. No, it's it's really not even that close either. There's not a team that truly believes in what they're doing right now more than NC State. You can see it. You can feel it if you're in the arena. You can feel it at home. You can feel it from the bar. Wherever you're at, it's palpable. The belief is palpable. They don't think that anyone can stand in their way at this point. And you are nothing but dangerous if you hold that mindset from there on out. Quick ad to be paid here before we continue. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys are able to take it to the next level. What team should I pick here? None other than the NC State Wolfpack. They are very obviously this week's Nissan Rogue. 
The team continues to surprise us all now with a sweet 16 victory over Marquette to advance to the elite eight for the first time since 1986. They say, win life, go rogue. And that's exactly what the Wolfpack have done. Take the Nissan rogue, the Nissan pathfinder or the Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. All right. I saw a comment here before I lose it. This one. Everyone steps up when their number is called. How proud would Robert and I be of these guys right now? Be relevant when your number is called, he said back in the fall. Coming into this season, this is like the 32nd time we brought this up. The depth of this team was configured to make runs like this, where it doesn't matter who you throw into the game, they can give you minutes that matter. Ben Middlebrooks is one that really comes to mind in that category for me tonight. Ben Middlebrooks, we know how he is. He's a little bit of a bull in a china shop sometimes. But if you can channel that effectively, he becomes a weapon of mass destruction. And then tonight, it came in the form of drawing fouls against Marquette. Ben Middlebrooks would get the ball, just go go ham in the paint, and Marquette had no other answer than just reach in and take a foul. Mm -hmm. That, you know, it's not putting points on the board, but in a roundabout way, it get it it kind of did later on, but it's it's little things like that. You have guys that you can insert into the lineup and they will make a difference. Jaden Taylor already mentioned him. Big shots tonight. All of a sudden, man, he has found it from the perimeter in this postseason, and he hits them at the biggest moments possible. I thought Jaden Taylor was excellent tonight. I mean in, in the big picture, I thought he took maybe a couple ill-advised shots, but he hit the big shots when we really needed them. He played excellent defense. Casey Morsell, big shots tonight, played excellent defense on Kolick. Nearly picked his pocket like four to five times. I think he did end up getting him like maybe twice or three times, but the, the defense that those two guards have played in particular is so invaluable to this run. And Marquette, you know, we talked about their their main function is just a very dynamic offense. And their defense, at times it can be stingy. NC State had by far the superior defense tonight. Yeah. Limiting Marquette to just one shot. A lot of times it wasn't exactly a shot that they wanted to take, but they had no other options. The defense tonight for NC State was outstanding. And it is, it's, again, another one of these revelations where it's like NC State's playing – superior defense in March Madness. Yeah. This is not a video game. This is real life. They're playing legitimate lockdown defense. They're playing championship defense in the postseason right now. That's real. That's yeah. real. They're getting it done on the defensive side. They they've shaken off the can't get right itis. I mean remember all of a sudden, yes. There were there were times was there not times during the season we beat Wake Forest, who should have been a tournament team, without hitting a single three. How do you think that happens? Defensively, being connected, talking, communicating, switching properly, understanding the assignments properly and all that. They have they won many games earlier this year where it was just DJ Horn and great defense. Yes. And so I'm not that shocked to see them playing well defensively in the tournament. What I am shocked about is I to see the way that we are shooting the ball in the clutch. To see the way that, you know, I'm I'm not going to say who tweeted it, but there was a tweet from the page that said, we know Marquette is going for a run here. And yeah, you expected we, it to happen. And it you, did. You expected it. it. It happened to a certain extent. But wasn't it so refreshing? Every time they got close, don't worry about it. Somebody's yeah. going to hit the shot. Yeah. Somebody's going to hit the shot. Every time it was like, we need a bucket, it, the pack would oblige. The pack would oblige. And, and by the way, I know that we're all excited about the men, but man, can we talk about the women for a second? Oh, yeah. Can we, we can talk about time. Westmore? NC State women's basketball has been to the Elite Eight three times in its entire history, two of them under Westmore, two of them in the last four years. Westmore is a bad man. That's a bad, bad man. But – he is a culmination of what his players are doing. And Isaiah James, 
you know, they call it a lucky left. There's not much luck in what she's out there doing. The shot clock is winding down. It looks like this is a possession where it's like, man, Stanford's playing great defense. If she's going to take a 30-footer and hit it, we're fine with that. LOL, she hits it. She yeah. hits it. You know, this is a game where I specifically said Brink is everything defensively, but if you can limit her and her running mate offensively in the front court, you'll have a great shot at this thing. Lo and behold, Brink gets in foul trouble, which wasn't an accident. That was Westmore saying, keep going at her. Yeah, she's got a few blocks. Yeah, she's she's made y'all adjust a few shots to the point where they have a lead, double-digit lead. Keep going at her. Those are players and coaches that are doing it with belief. Because you know what happens when the players don't believe in what the coach is saying? We would have saw a bunch of air in threes. Yeah. We would have saw a bunch of, hey, Brink's down there, coach. She's she's one of the nation's leader in blocks. I'm not, I'm not going to her. And yet the Wolfpack kept taking it to her chest, saying, you're going to keep verticality every time? You're going to block some. But every now and then, the refs are going to blow that whistle and put that arm up. They're going to blow that whistle. And, put, and they did it enough to where she fouled out in this game. I am telling you something right now. That women's team, I know that the men's team is getting lots of love, and rightfully so, going from the 11, uh, the 10th seed in the tournament being 11 seeded in the overall or being the um, and 11 seed in the NCAA tournament. But the women's team, a model of consistency, a model of Westmore not fitting, trying to fit square pegs in the round holes. He works with what he has. He sees the personnel and they make it go. And Zoe Brooks, tuh, she may be young, but she's ready. That's not, she's not playing like a freshman. No, she's That's not a freshman not, anymore. How many freshmen can you say down the stretch, I want the ball in your hands and they make the right decision? No shade to the ACC champs in Notre Dame. They won that ACC championship fair and square, but you could tell the difference between the level of trust in their young players. And again, her dog goes amazing. I've said many a time, if she wasn't born, you know, um, uh, Zoe Brooks would have been the, the freshman of the year, but she rightfully earned it. So with that being said, I, man, the, the women's team deserves more love for what they're doing because they got us with the expectation of this thing year in and year out. The men's team, what they're doing is phenomenal. What they're doing is phenomenal. Mo Diara doing what he's doing without eating, without drinking for the first, what, half and a half, three quarters of this game, basically. What, what they're doing in terms of everybody saying, oh, you know, they're pick and roll merchants. DJ Burns is going to get exposed. What they're doing in terms of keeping up with all Americans in the backcourt, it's phenomenal. They deserve all the love. But don't you forget about this women's team that has shown up and that has shown out. And I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, Texas or Gonzaga, I'm shaking in my boots. If I'm either one of them, I'm shaking in my boots because that this state team, uh, Westmore has learned his lesson from taking his foot off the gas. And that team, you want to talk about teams playing with church's money? Both of these teams were picked by most to finish eighth in the conference or lower. Both of these teams are playing with the church's money, Dominate. Yeah, and I, I talked about superior guard play coming into this women's matchup with Stanford. And when you have Isaiah James and you have Sinai Rivers, at the level that they can go, they are the engine that makes this car go. And when they are effective and when they are efficient, look out, get out the way, because there is very little you can do to to stay in in between NC State and moving on to the next round at that point. When they yeah. light it up, they take complete control of a quarter. Look out. They can play with anyone in the country. We've known this all season long. The most ranked wins of anyone else in the country. They beat UConn. They embarrassed mm -hmm. Colorado. They mm -hmm. can do it with. They can do it with anyone. Stanford doesn't matter. Anyone you throw in front of, anyone you, you throw in front of right now, in front of them, hold on, in front of them right now, yeah. they can handle business. Yeah, both of these, for, for lack of a better word, both of these teams are hunting as a pack. Both of these teams, yeah. it's not one player getting it done. It's everybody coming along. It's everybody chipping in. It's everybody being relevant when their number is called. It's special. 
it's special to see what these two teams are doing. And I'll tell you, if you don't believe that these teams are real now, are you not entertained? Yeah. What do you are waiting? you not entertained? <laughs> One more quick ad here, and then we'll close this out with our final thoughts of the evening. Our second ad of this live show is Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is the destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV. Whether it's opening weekend for the MLB or watching your NC State Wolfpack advance to the Elite Eight, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from all of your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us here at Locked On. You can watch us on Amazon Fire TV and also all of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. March Madness, NBA, MLB, everything, not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, and cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. And if you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, well, what are you waiting on? Trust us on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. Now, I did see a comment from Shane Richardson here. To see people celebrating NC State on a national scale is a beautiful thing. And the impact, not just recruiting, not just NIL, but program recognition nationwide, that means so much to NC State fans. We all know how long it's been that we've been out of the spotlight in this sport in particular. First Elite Eight since 1986. It's been a long time. Before we won the ACC title, it had been since 1987. We have been waiting a very long time about this. And I want to do a quick callback to some comments that Jay Wright made after we had defeated Oakland uh, in the round of 32. And he talked about that NC State is such a proud fan base and basically alluded to the fact that we are a sleeping giant. And college basketball is so exciting when Duke is good and the Dirty Foot Club is good and NC State is good right there with them. The the overall product of college basketball and the ACC, for that matter, is so much more fun, so much more exciting when NC State is in the mix. And I'm not going to do a victory lap. We saw what the Dirty Foot Club did last night. To watch NC State succeed on this level tonight after seeing that last night, it just amplifies this feeling that NC State is very much here. The whole country is watching NC State. We've sat for 37 years of the nation praising the other two blue schools. NC State is getting their shine right now. That is a beautiful thing. Long overdue. This run is obviously extremely well-deserved. The the determination from the players is unlike anything I've ever seen in a team, and especially in just two weeks. The regular season they had, everyone was frustrated. It didn't go the way that anyone wanted it to. And to now sit here at the end of March, you're in the Elite Eight. And that's, that. I mean, that is real. That's real. I, I don't know how many times I have to say it to actually believe it, but NC State's going to play in the Elite Eight on Sunday, and it's going to be against Houston, who's a one seed, or Duke, who we just defeated two weeks ago in <coughs> in the ACC quarterfinals. Yeah, The winner of that game will go to the Final Four. NC State is one win away from the Final Four. Mm-hmm. That's real. That, that I mean... And not, and I shouldn't only talk about men. The women's obviously they're in the same boat. They are one win away from the final four. Westmore, this a final four has eluded Westmore here for quite some time. He's had the teams to get there, but just hasn't quite been able to open that door. He's knocked on it, hasn't quite gotten it open yet. This no. team that he produced this year and the expectations for them were low, exceeded all of those. I mean, Literally all of those expectations blown out of the water. And here they also stand, one win from the Final Four. NC State to be on this platform right now is is such an invaluable experience. I can't imagine what the players 
are feeling right now. Well, I I would imagine they feel like their work is not done, which is exactly how they should feel because they can both of these teams doesn't matter who you put in front of them. They can play with anyone right now. That includes UConn, men and women for that matter. UConn, they're going to give them a game. It doesn't matter. They're going to fight and fight and fight and try to figure out as best they can how to come out with that win. That's a that you can't quantify what a what an absolute tear that is to be on at this point in time. Seeing UConn on the neutral floor in women's basketball, who we on an actual neutral floor this time, not neutral as in in, in Connecticut, 20 minutes away from their campus type neutral. Who we, who, who we seeing this men's team take on Duke or Houston in the Elite Eight? I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna tell you something. I I think it's so interesting how we talked about for the women in particular, hey, they drew a great bracket. They drew, I don't know how this happened, but they drew a bracket where like I I know nationally there'll be underdogs against few, a few of these teams, but you and me both said it, Grayson. These matchups work out great for them. They they do. And then you look at the men's team and you talk about Houston, whose whose defense is relied on the fact that you all cannot have a bunch of ball handlers who make good decisions with the ball. When we have a four guard lineup that is like plus 50 something in this tournament. Mm. Mm. It's, mm. <laughs> uh, it's barbecue chicken alert on all fronts, on all fronts, <laughs> barbecue chicken alert. I'm telling you right now, I am so excited for both of these teams. They have earned it. They deserve it. And and I'm going to say one last thing here, okay? Because everybody understands who Westmore is, and we put respect on his name. But for the people saying that the ACC was a bad conference this year, and NC State's run was just because they hadn't played a highly seeded team yet. You know, they they even though they played a six seed in Texas Tech, apparently six ain't high enough for some people. Where where are you now? Where are you now? The Rothsteins of the world, the Lenardis of the world, Boy. all of the. Come on, pick up the phone, John. You pick up the phone. To, you're talking about Joe? having to go back and delete some tweets, huh? Oh, they're not going to delete it. They're going to quadruple down and just say, "Well, da, 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 da. they missed a bunch of open shots." <laughs> Who cares? Who cares? If ifs and buts were berries and nuts, squirrels would never starve. We live in the real world, baby. And in the real world, the elite eight on both sides are going. They're going. This block S is going to be in both of them. This here is going to be in both of them. That logo on his chest, that toughy, going to be in both of them. And that's all there is to it. NC State men and women advanced to the Elite Eight on the same night playing at the same time. Live this up, NC State fans. Wolfpack fans worldwide, nationwide. Something I've noticed, actually, before we get out of here, something I've noticed in the comments that gets me on the brink of tears. One of my favorite things about doing this podcast is when people chime in saying, Hey, I'm watching from Irmo, South Carolina. Hey, I'm watching from Louisiana. Hey, I'm watching from California. Hey, I'm watching from New York Wolfpack. We love NC state that see, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. That, that, that is how much this means to this fan base. We are everywhere watching a, a run of absolute magic. And we are all locked in on this thing together. We have all waited for something like this together for decades. And now we all get to celebrate this together. So in the comments, if you have not already, let us know. Here's another one. NC State grad, NC State grad station in San Diego. What's up, Mortensen? Thank you for joining us, man. We're going to the Elite Eight. Can you believe that? Hey, I'm watching from 1983. Man, you know, some time traveling on our hands. Man, what, is, what, is gas, what does gas look like right now back then, huh? <laughs> Outer Banks, watching. I'm watching from Pennsylvania. See, y'all are going to get me to cry, I swear. Tallahassee, Florida. Man, yeah. we're, we're everywhere. Wolfpack is <clears> – <throat> come on, I got to finish the show. We are everywhere, okay? We have waited forever for this, and we're doing it. We're going yeah. to the Elite Eight. We're doing it. And we are – a win away from the final four, men and women, a win, a, two wins away from playing for the whole freaking thing. And, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna say this. 
enjoy this run because we will never get another run like this again. And what do I mean by that? Right now, I believe we're resetting the expectation. Right now, we're wearing the white hat. We're the hero of the story. We're the one that everybody's rooting for to win. But as NC State starts to establish ourselves as this is who we are, as Westmore getting there every year, as Kevin Keats showing this ain't a one-off, we'll get to wear that black hat. And everybody won't root for NC State so much anymore. They're going to say, the pack are here again, and that's where we want to be. But for now, let's enjoy it. While we got that white hat on and everybody, and we're America's team, well, let's go ahead and do the damn thing, man. Let's go ahead, okay? Let's do it. All right, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. I'm not going to make anyone else cry. I'm not going to make myself cry. So we need to go ahead and hang them up here uh, before we get into that. But also want to get out of here because we have to celebrate this, okay? If you're watching this, first of all, thank you for joining us. This always means so much to us that we have a ton of participation here in the chat every time we do a live show. So first of all, thank you. We are so grateful for you joining us. Second of all, close this down and get out there and celebrate. Yeah. We're going to the Elite Eight. Celebrate like you never saw this coming because honestly, none of us did. Celebrate like that. Celebrate like you mean it. Enjoy every second of this run. Don't take this for granted. We don't know when we're going to have to have a chance to experience something like this again. Live, live it up like that every moment. Thank you all so much for joining us. Be sure to hit that like button. Drop your comments in the box if you have not already. Let us know what you think, man. Tell us, tell us where you're watching from because that is one of my favorite things. I'll probably cry about it later. Tell us where you're watching from. Tell us what this means to you and your family. Tell us if you're going to make the trip to Dallas. Tell us anything and everything you have on your mind. And second of all, get out there and celebrate. We will see you all uh, Sunday, Sunday live show. We're doing a live show after each one of these games. So whether we play Houston or Duke, we're going to be back on here to talk about it. Be sure to join us after that. Of course, we'll always be on Twitter. Any thoughts you want to share with us on Twitter, tag us. I'll holler back at you. I always do. Enjoy this, man. We're the underdogs. We're going to stay the underdogs, and we like it that way. We're not supposed to be here. We're not supposed to be here, and we're going to keep playing like that. Okay? Live it up, y'all. Go Pack. Go celebrate this. We'll see you all on Sunday. Go Pack.